So here's our example for the grocery cost per person and the number of people in the family. Now I have everything already populated here, but we're going to go through it one by one. We're then going to do a scatter plot and see how to work with that in Excel and then also use our data analysis, our quick um, method of doing linear regression. So here's our data, the number of people in the family and the grocery cost per person. And as usual, what we have to do is figure out our explanatory or x variable first and our response variable or y variable second. So here we can see that our grocery cost should really be depending on the number of people in the family. So that's our first thing that we're going to have to do. Now I already have the results here that our grocery cost per per dollars per person is going to equal to 8864 minus 409 times the number of people in the family. And we're going to walk through how did we get those values. So the first thing we're going to look at is the correlation coefficient. And remember that gives us the form, strength, and direction of our relationship. So here I'm just going to go equals C O double -R, R E L and I'm going to pick my formula. I'm going to pick my argument box and I'm going to pick my array and I'm going to put my array. I don't need the headings. There's my X's and there's my Y's. And for this particular function, it doesn't matter which one you put like X's here or Y's here. Um, it will come out to the same result. And we can go OK. And there's my value, negative 86808. For the slope, same type of thing to get the function equals slope. Pick my function. Go to my argument box. Now here, we have to do the y's first. So there's my y's. And notice again, we don't include the header. And here's my x's. And I select them. And OK. And there's my slope, negative 408889, and I've just kept them as five decimal places here. We can then go to our intercept, same type of thing, equals intercept, pick my function, go to my argument box. Again, we have to have the y's and then the x's, so there's my y's without the heading, there's my x's without the headings, and now we can go OK and I get 88.644. And you can see I have the formula text over here to help you out. Now the coefficient of determination, that's our capital R squared. And remember, it's just equal to little r squared. So here, my r squared is just going to be equal my little r raised to the power 2. So that little up arrow is an exponent of 2, and we get 7563. And I have that formatted as a percentage. So you might have that as a number. Maybe you got it that it looked like this. Well, I want it as a percent, and I want to increase the decimal places. Here we have our co 1 minus the coefficient of determination, and we're going to interpret all of these values. And again, that's just equals 1 minus this value here. And we get it again. That is also formatted as a percentage. So before we go through the rest, let's take a look at the definitions. So here, there's our correlation coefficient, negative 868. So the definition here, or the interpretation, the meaning, is R, the correlation coefficient of negative 868, indicates a negative and strong relationship between the grocery cost in dollars per person and the number of people in the family. So strong because it's very, very close to negative 1. Negative, of course, because it's negative. Now, the form for linear, we'd actually have to take a look at the scatter plot in order to figure that out. And we'll do that in just a few minutes. The slope, B1, and our slope is negative 4089. That's indicating that for every increase of one person in family, the grocery cost in dollars per person is going to be going down by $4.09. So we're actually saving a little bit of money. The intercept, B0, is the intercept of 8864. That indicates when there's no one in the family, the grocery cost in dollars per person is actually $88.64. Now, please note that in this context, the intercept really doesn't have any meaning. If there's nobody in the family, then we are not buying groceries, right? So this is something we have to watch for with our intercept. Um, sometimes it will have meaning, and sometimes it won't. Our R squared value, we got 75.36% for that. 
That means that 75.36% of the variation in grocery cost in dollars per person is currently being explained by the number of people in the family. So my explanatory variable is doing a pretty good job, high value here, of explaining the differences in grocery costs. The 2464, well you notice that these two values add to 100 and this is just one minus the coefficient of determination or the squared correlation if you prefer and that's explaining that only 26.64% of the variation in grocery cost is not being explained by the number of people in the family. So even though our explanatory variable is doing a pretty good job, it's explaining 75% of the variation, it's not explaining everything. Other stuff might be going on. Now I have here also a different way of getting the slope and the intercept and it's using the line est function and you don't have to know how to use it but it is sort of handy. There's instructions down here for how to do it. What we have to do is we first have to select the two cells. Then again we press equals to get our function and start typing in line est, pick our function, go to our argument box and then again we have to pick our known y's and our known x's. So there's my known y's, here's my known x's and we're not going to do anything else, we're not entering anything else here but before we press ok we have to hit the shift key and the enter key. And when we do that, we'll get both of these cells populating. And you'll notice that the slope is the same as the slope up here and the intercept is the same as the intercept up here. One difference with this is that I've given you the headings that this is the slope and the, this is the intercept. When we use this line est function, it doesn't tell you which is which. So you have to be very careful when you're using it. Now one of the other questions that we asked in that um, grocery cost and number of people in the family was if there's four people in the family, what's my grocery cost going to be? And for doing that, this is a, in orange so I can put any value I want here. So say if I put in five and hit enter, well you see the prediction or forecast has updated. What function is that? That's just the equals forecast function and I did something wrong here so let me do it again, equals forecast and hang on, forecast linear, sorry I just wanted to make sure I'm using the right function, so equals forecast linear, there it is there, pick up your dialog box, where is your known x going to be in the cell above, where are your y's, well here are the y's over here, again no heading, where are your x's, here are the x's over here, again no heading, and ok. And we wanted to know the forecast for four people so I can put in four and enter and I get my results 7229. Let's go ahead now and take a look at a scatter plot. So I'm going to highlight my data, I'm going to use this quick analysis tool on the bottom, the icon on the bottom. I'm going to go to charts and I'm going to go to scatter chart and I'm just going to make it nice and big so that we can see it on the screen decently and it's not looking very good right now. I'm just going to move it over so little things there. So I'm going to add a few things to it. I'm going to add my axis titles. I'm going to add uh, a trend line and I want linear. I want more options. And where did that go? Oh, here it is. Sorry, got to move me out of the way. <laughs> I want to display the equation on the chart and the R squared value on the chart. So I'm going to fix it up a little bit here. I'm going to make this my title. I'm going to change that to grocery cost and that's dollars per person. I'm going to fix this axis on the bottom. I'm going to make that number in family. I'm going to fix the title a little bit and I'm just going to go versus, oops, versus and family. Oop, I don't want that. And I'm going to take this here and, oops, no, sorry, you have to be very careful what you're selecting in Excel. 
I'm going to move that to the top. I'm going to increase the font size. We're going to make it 18. And I'm going to fix the equation. Instead of using y's and x's, I'm going to put the actual uh, names for the variables and the units. I'm also going to put in the variable name for x here. That's family. Get rid of the x. And let's maybe bring it down here so we can see it a bit better. And I'm just going to put a fill behind it so that we can see it a little better. Okay. So now we have our scatter plot. We can definitely see that, yeah, it looks like there's a linear form. We have our r squared is 0.7536. If we wanted r, we could just get the square root of that value and it should come out to the value we had before. So the value we had before, just so you can see it, our r was negative 868. Please note if you are doing that to get the r value, taking the square root of it, of r squared, you do have to see the scatter plot so that you can see whether it's supposed to be negative or positive. What I'd like to do now is use our fancy data and data analysis. We had done this uh, earlier in the semester, so we're going to, we did it for histograms, we're going to do it again right now. So I'm going to go data analysis, I can cursor through and I can find regression, double click on it. I'm going to input my, my y's, so I'm just going to delete that, and I'm going to include my header with it this time round. I'm going to ink highlight my X's and again I'm including my header. I keep labels there. I want it to go into a new worksheet and I want to select all these boxes down here and we're going to go through each of the things that we get. So when I use that data analysis and go OK, I get a new spreadsheet and we're going to format that spreadsheet. We want to format the cells and auto fit the column widths. And you'll notice we get a lot of output here. So here's our R squared. So I'm going to highlight that. Here's our intercept and our slope down there. Please note you don't get the actual equation here. You get a lot of analysis. You get something called an ANOVA, which is an analysis of variance, way more than we need. Uh, we get an adjusted R squared, a standard error, and a multiple R. We only need the R squared. We get some confidence interval around each of our slope and intercept values. And we have the residual output here. So here's our predicted costs for the grocery. There's the residual. There's the standardized residual. And just notice here, if we actually sum the residuals, this, that's a really teeny number. So I'm just going to change it into a number. And it's, for all intents and purposes, zero. Okay. So for this, we're, you know, we're only using basically what's highlighted in blue. So let's take a look at these graphs. So I'm going to move over to this side here. So I have a normal. A normal probability plot. Push that to the side. Push it to the side. I have a residual plot. Sorry, I keep double selecting things. Put that there. I'm going to push that over here. And here's our fitted line plot. So I'm going to make this one nice and big so that we can see it. Again, you'll notice for this one, it actually puts the orange, the predicted grocery costs, on the graph in addition to our raw data. It also, because I had headings selected, it actually put the headings where they were supposed to be. So I might want to fix the title here. So let's just go grocery cost versus number in the family. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to add a few things here. I'm going to add some grid lines to make it a little easier for us to see. Let's, yeah, let's do that one so it's a little easier, little easier for us to see. And I'm going to add a trend line. And I want it for the grocery cost per person. So I'm going to go OK. Notice it goes through the orange lines. 
on the trend line, I'm also going to go more options. Same thing. Okay. Oops. For some reason that didn't. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Let me get back to this. Trend line options. Okay. Takes a little time for it to show up. I want the linear matching. I want display equation and display R squared. I'm going to get rid of that. Don't worry about this legend part here for now. And again, you'll notice we have the same equation. And I really should be going in here and fixing up my variables. Uh, can't spell today. And now we have our nice equation. And if I wanted to, I think I'll get rid of the legend so I can have a bit of a nicer graph. And I'm going to format that and I'm going to give it a fill of blue so it shows up nicely like before. So we can see here how we have our straight line, we have our scatter plot, and then we'd have all our output. Now what we do want to go through is the residual plot. So let's grab our residual plot and make it a little bit bigger. So there's our residual plot. Sorry, I'm going to push that over there. We'll deal with that in a minute. And we can see here that for our residual plot, we're looking at values that are above what was predicted and values that are below what was predicted based on the number of people in the family. And we can see here that there's no real pattern, no distinct pattern. Now we do have a small data set, so you know we have to take that in consideration. And the variation across the number of people in the family does seem to be pretty consistent. So this would support us doing linear regression. For our normal probability plot, Again, let's make this one a little bit bigger. We had seen this, I believe it was way back in chapter five or six, I think it was six on the normal model. And we can see here that this is approximately, it's not perfectly, but it's approximately a straight line. Again, indicating that our grocery cost data, excuse me, is normally distributed. So that covers off all the Excel. So we saw how, um, we could, I'm just going to get rid of that for a minute, we could do things individually like you'll be doing for your Excel lab. We saw how we could interpret each of the values. We saw how we could create a scatter plot and add the different values to it. And then also we use that fancy data analysis under the data tab. So try this out for your lab and hopefully everything will work well for you. Thanks a lot.